Studying plate boundaries is important because along these boundaries deformation of the lithosphere is happening. These geologic events have a great impact not only on the environment but also on us. There are three distinct types of plate boundaries, which are differentiated by the type of movement they exhibit. The first type of plate boundary is termed divergent boundary wherein plates move apart, creating a zone of tension. Let's take the case of the Philippine plate and the Eurasian plate. You will notice that the two plates are moving toward each other. This is an example of a zone where plates collide, and this second type of plate boundary is called convergent plate boundary. The third type is the transform fault boundary where plates slide or grind past each other without diverging or converging. The best example of this plate boundary is the San Andreas Fault which is bounded by the North American Plate and the Pacific Plate. Now that we have learned the types of boundaries, let us now explore the various effects of plate tectonic on Earth's lithosphere. We will be focusing on convergent boundary and its effects alongside the boundaries. This lesson is anchored on the following objectives. Explain the processes that occur along convergent boundaries determine the consequences of colliding plates. Reminder. You can pause or playback the video if you need to recall important details. Avoid doing other things to prevent disturbances and concentrate yourself in studying. Try your best to answer each quiz without replay to determine whether you have learned something. Get your notebook and answer the following items in the pretest. This will help you determine your strength and weakness about the lesson. Read each question carefully before choosing your answer. You can pause the video but you are not allowed to skip and use other gadget to verify your answer. Always remember honesty is the best policy. Let's start the pretest. Try to check your answer. Here are the equivalent performance rating scale of your score. A rating of 1 to 6 equate to below expectations. A 7 and 8 equate to meeting expectations. And a 9 and 10 equate to exceeding expectations. Do not worry if got 6 below, because you are about to take the perfect score in just few moment. Here are the following terms to help you understand the lesson. You can also pause and jot down important terms. Let us perform this experiment to understand the processes that occurs along the oceanic and continental crust. For this simple experiment you will be needing the following materials. Dip one side of the foam into the water, and place it 2 to 3 cm away from the other foam. Position the wet part of the other foam at the center, and push each end of the foam 4 cm inward or toward each other until they overlap. The wet foam represent the oceanic crust while the other one represent the continental crust. 
the continental crust curves upward on top of the oceanic crust due to its lesser density. The oceanic crust which is denser bend downward and stays below. Analyze this model. When an oceanic and continental crust converges, a crack underwater called trench is formed since an oceanic crust has a greater mass due to the presence of water on it, so its density is also greater. This difference in density causes the leading plate of the oceanic crust to dive down under the overriding plate, the continental plate. Subduction is the process by which a plate dives under the less dense plate or crust. As the leading plate goes deeper into the mantle it melts and becomes magma. Due to the high temperature in the mantle, the magma builds up a pressure that enables it to push the ground above it. The column of rising magma is called a mantle plume. When there is a volcanic activity such as an eruption the ground moves so an earthquake is felt. Because subduction continues a group of volcanoes called volcanic arc is formed at the surface of the continental crust along the boundary where the two crust converge. The movement of the ground may cause a disturbance in the ocean. The water may flip of kick upward to a few meters high. This is what we call tsunami, a Japanese term for harbor wave. This event is very dangerous when it moves in land it destroys life and properties. I know this won't be easy, but I also know you've got what it takes to get through it. Analyze carefully the diagram before proceeding to the guide questions. The answers for the following guide questions is provided on the last part of the video. Now let's study the geologic processes and events when two oceanic crust collide or converges to one another. Try to perform this experiment to analyze the result of two colliding oceanic crust. For this experiment you will be needing a rectangular basin or food tray half filled with water, two pieces of foam, and a flat surface. Submerge the two foam on the basin containing water. Arrange them at least 2 cm away from each other. Slowly push 4 cm inward each outer end of the foam, and observe what happens. This diagram shows two oceanic crust underwater. You must have noticed that there is a boundary line between the crust, a trench. It is a crack on the crust which is underwater. The convergence of two oceanic crust results in some similar events compared to the first type of convergence. Tsunamis may be form, earthquake may happen. There is also subduction, because one plate is denser than the other. The leading plate in the subduction zone becomes magma upon reaching the mantle. Then it builds a pressure due to high temperature and pushes the crust above it forming a volcano. This is a continuous process since the plates are moving. The volcano will move with the plate and it becomes extinct when it's no longer above the magma deposit in the mantle. A new volcano will be formed. This series of volcanoes is called Volcanic Island Arc since it is surrounded by water. This explains why the Philippines is loaded with volcanoes. The different islands were believed to be originated from the convergence of two oceanic crust. Many parts of the Philippines originated from oceanic to oceanic convergence. This resulted from the collision of two oceanic plates, with one of the plates diving under the other. Majority of the islands in the Philippine archipelago are considered as part of the Philippine Mobile Belt. These islands were formed 65 million years ago at the southern edge of the Philippine Sea Plate and are considered as part of island arcs. Other parts of the Philippines, such as Palawan, Mindoro, and the Zamboanga Peninsula are all highland sections of the Sundaland block of the Eurasian Plate.
The Sundulan block of the Eurasian plate is the former name of the Sunda plate, a small tectonic plate located off the southeast coast of the Asian mainland. It was once considered a part of the Eurasian plate that had the potential to break away. The Philippine Mobile Belt eventually collided with the Sundaland block which explains the presence of trenches, such as the Manila to Negros to Cotabato Trench System, and the Sulu Trench. On the eastern side of the Philippines, trenches like the Philippine Trench and East Luzon Trough are both products of subducting Philippine sea plate beneath the archipelago. Before we proceed with the lesson, let us differentiate trench and trough since they are featured underwater tourist attraction in Philippine archipelago. Trench is defined generally as those deeper than 6,000 meters, while trough is shallower than 6,000 meters. Aside from the formation of trenches and troughs, the downward movement of oceanic lithospheres underneath the Philippine archipelago creates active volcanic chains. For example, the descent of the West Philippine Sea Oceanic Lithosphere along the Manila Trench created a volcanic chain from Taiwan to Mindoro. Some of the known active volcanoes in this chain are Pinatubo in central Luzon and Tal in Batangas. Also, the constant dipping movement of slabs induces frequent moderate to strong earthquakes at various depths, gives rise to mountain ranges and develops the geologic character of the Philippine archipelago. Let's try our best in answering the following guide questions. I know it's a lot but I know you can do it. Converging continental crust or plate results into a collision zone which could cause shallow earthquake at that place a crack called fault is formed. This type of convergence will cause no subduction since the two plates have the same density. There would be no volcanoes formed, no tsunamis. This converging plates may result to highland formation, that we called mountain ranges. Mount Everest is the highest of the Himalayan mountains, at 8,850 meters, 29,035 feet, is considered the highest point on Earth. There's good evidence that the Himalayas are getting taller, at the rate of about 5 mm a year. That's because the tectonic collision that created the Himalayas 50 million years ago is still happening today. Now that you have learned the processes that occur along the convergent boundaries and the consequences of collision of this different types of plates or crust, you should create a table to summarize the details of your learning. Here is the format to begin with. You can replay the video to recall some of the informations you cannot remember. Now is your chance to get that perfect score. I know you got this. Congratulations for completing the lesson I hope you find this helpful on your part.
Always remember, learning is not attained by chance. It must be sought for with ardor and diligence.